all. So I'm introducing myself. I'm Sadidul Alam. And, and we should behave throughout the talk, right? Because you are the moderator. Yes. <laughs> and I'm going to talk about routing protocols for underwater acoustic system networks. And this presentation is relatively small, I think. It has 13 slides. And I'm going to answer some of the questions I have raised in these slides. The first question is, why do we need underwater sensor network? Underwater sensor network is required for oceanographic data collection because there may be some mineral exploration, explorations or well or gas exploration going on. And these can be easily done, not easily done, this can be done with the help of these under, underwater sensor networks. And for pollution monitoring, environmental monitoring, and tactical surveillance, the underwater sensor networks can be used. And what is the underwater sensor, ac acoustic sensor network? In the sensor network, there are a lot of sensors and some, some vehicles that are unmanned and autonomous. And the main communication link under the water is acoustic link. And above the water surface, there can be radio link or some other links. Like here, it is shown that satellite links, it can use satellites or some other form of communication signals. But in the water, there is acoustic link. So you mean like sound wave? Yeah, sound wave. So it uses sound modems for receiving and sending data. And why do we use acoustic sensor? That is why we are using this sound wave. Because radio waves is not very uh, helpful there because it cannot propagate long distance in the high frequency, in very low frequency, it can go some extra long distances, but for high frequency, the attenuation is very large, so it drops. And for the optical waves, there is scattered wave, or the light doesn't go a long distance. And the transmission requires high precision, and it requires narrow laser beams. So optical wave and radio wave are not suitable for underwater. So the suitable link is the acoustic uh, wireless communication, but the problem is the acoustic signal is very slow. <coughs> so acoustic signal doesn't have the scattering effect? Uh, not as much as the other things have. Okay. It has scattering effect. What's the it, frequency range you're using uh, for acoustic? No, it can be more than 1 megahertz or 244 megahertz in the megahertz range it can be. Oh, is it in the megahertz range? Yes. Oh. So, what is this? so we can hear the three and the... Just hertz. So sound wave can be in kilohertz in megahertz range. Megahertz means we can't hear them? No. no. We cannot hear even the uh, dolphins or some other animals under the sea. They, they can't hear. hear. Oh. Because if they can hear, then it will disturb them. Yeah. And yeah. So that is not very helpful. Yeah. Okay. So... That, uh, one more thing. So... Um, in that frequency, the wavelength is uh, pretty high, right? No. No. It's no. In megahertz. Length is low. Yeah. Wavelength is... Is it very high frequency? The, the wavelength is very small. small. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that, that will suffer from um, scattering, right, as well? Uh, A lot of scattering. No, he's uh, talking about relative scattering. So. For uh, yes. optical communication, the scattering is much higher. Much higher than yeah. Actually, the scattering is mainly based on the uh, wavelength. The as as small wavelength, it will scatter less. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's why it's uh, really high. This wavelength is small too. That's why. Okay, you can yeah. continue. Uh, actually, these are physical matters. I don't yeah. know much about those physical things. Yeah. Uh, but the. Link is acoustic. Why? Because the other links or the other signals are not very yeah. suitable. Yeah. That cannot propagate to much yeah. long distance. Yeah. So, for these networks or for communication, we always use some layerings uh, or OSI model, Open System Interconnect model. So, in the physical layer, uh, we use say for communication we are using uh, acoustic signal and. The routing protocol is in the network layer, and in between network layer and physical layer is darling layer, and most of us know these things. 
So for communication in the network layer, we send packets, and these packets are from sent from the source to a destination, and in between it can travel to multiple hubs, and those hubs are not the destination for the packet. The main target is we have to send some packet from source to some destination by using some hubs, or it can be only single hub destination, but there can be multiple hubs. So routing protocol is in the network layer, and in my work or currently I am studying the routing protocols in the network layer. So what are the routing protocols for underwater sensor network? There are a lot of uh, routing protocols currently suggested by different researchers. Uh, here some of them. Vector based forwarding, VBF, and a modification of that VBF is hop by hop vector based forwarding, depth based forwarding, routing, and hop by hop dynamic addressing based. Is to DAB and other than this, there are other many other routing protocols, but all of the protocols has to face some challenges. The challenges are the battery power because the sensors are in the under the sea or under water, the battery cannot be changed, and sometimes the sensors are once deployed, they're lost or they can be lost. Oh, okay, so you cannot uh, gather them and change the battery, there is no way and the bandwidth is low for the acoustic signal and there are some adverse characteristics in the channel that is long and very low propagation delay, multi-path and fading problems and there can be high error rate and the sensors can be failed due to the fouling or corrosion there can be uh, some materials that can accumulate over the sensors and it can uh, deter the signal propagation or signal sending or receiving. <coughs> so there are a lot of problems if we want to work with the sensor. So the do, do sharks like these sensors? Because I know the sharks like the submarine cable. Yeah, I don't <coughs> think sharks will be a problem. Well, because these sensors are relatively large. Oh. Normally in the uh, normal sensors they are small yeah. but as they require large batteries or large power uh -huh. so if you deploy a small sensor yeah. then it will be uh, oh. used up very soon so yeah um, are these sensors uh, you know floating or no. No. It, there are some floating sensors there can be some submerged sensors there can be some fixed sensors at the bottom the bed, sea bed. and yeah on, on the, the sea bed. Bed. yeah okay. not all the sensors in the seabed. Some are in the seabed, some are floating in between and I told, uh, just mentioned about the unmanned or autonomous vehicles. Some are just moving, roaming under the sea. So these sensors are communicating using sonar with the upper network, yeah. uh, but they can sense all kind of stuff, right? No, they, they could have some specific purposes. Yes, so only the transmission protocol Yep. is uh, sonar. The link right. is sonar link. Okay, okay, done. Okay. So, so up to, up to, I think it's uh, up to network layer, from physical data link and, uh, and network layer, these are all uh, uh, acoustic channel. Well, I mean, uh, you have to uh, assume that you are using acoustic yeah. channel. Um, because, yeah. say, the routing protocols for some uh, radio signals could, is not same for them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because if you use the other signals that are already in say for internet, you cannot use them for yeah, yeah. Uh, underwater. Yeah. Because uh, you have to consider the propagation delay of the signals because yeah. it will take more time for sending signal from one place yeah. to another. For yeah. acoustic web, it's a physical web. It will not require a lot of energy to transmit a wave, right? Yes. yes. So it has yeah. to use power. But it will require, it's a drawback, right? Because it will, it will need a lot of energy to Provided that wave through this yes. ocean. Mm -hmm. yeah. So energy should be low uh, under the water. Uh, no, in comparison, no. high because uh, the speed is slow. Mm -hmm. So, say in between there are a lot of time to yeah. get it distorted or speed is noise. low or uh, high. Frequency? Is speed uh, like speed is only fifteen hundred meter per second. No, but uh, it's a sound wave. Sound wave. 
Yeah, so, but the sound uh, is, is it is higher uh, like under the water. Then uh, the air is the only water. 300 something meter yeah. per second. But under the water, it is higher than this. But no, you have to think about electromagnetic signal yeah, electromagnetic because that's the other thing we have in the. So, but why we are not using uh, electromagnetic uh, Because that attenuation is too fast. I would explain it's you like to send calls. Water, water distance. particle is a big absorber for mm -hmm. EM. Yeah. That's why. So, for optics, there will be a scattering effect. Mm -hmm. For radio wave, there you need really long antennas. So, these are the two problems. That's why you need. Uh, is there any universal protocol for. No. 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 These no? things are mostly in the simulation stage because. Uh, Using them, uh, deploying a real network is also not One possible. One of the main no. problem of underwater sensor network is like that. Uh, different level of water has yeah. a different kind of density. Temperature mm -hmm. density, so speed. So that's why uh, the sensor you have deployed, like uh, a sensor is at level one. One sensor is at level one, mm -hmm. another one is at level two. Mm -hmm. So there is a challenge. Like in in similar level, you can the sensors can communicate, but mm -hmm. when the Sensors are at different level of the water, then it's really difficult to communicate with, with uh, the sensors. Why so the water current, like change of water current, and those yes. things will also affect. Of yes. Course. yes. So yes. it will have the node mobility problem because yeah. say you are sending to some direction, the node is not here. It has changed its very, location. Very few research labs actually work with underwater sensor network, and the, and yeah. there are very. Uh, I only know that University of Connecticut, Connecticut only stops. works with the underwater I think uh, the, the guy who wrote the Java language, James Gosling, he recently joined another startup which works with this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, only, only the University of Connecticut has the and accessories. And another is, uh, yeah, Connecticut, Connecticut. They deployed some, okay, some yeah. instruments under the sea and tested with yeah. their Protocol of, yeah. There are so several companies who actually uh, uh, manufacture underwater robots. They only have the, 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 the routing protocol proposed by the University of Connecticut, it's the most efficient one. Okay. So far. And so far. Okay. Why are you saying it's the most efficient one? Because uh, uh, my friends were working uh, at Word, my friends were working with the underwater sensor network pro routing protocol. They were trying to uh, propose some new protocol, try to improve that. But, uh, so far, I've heard from them that 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 professor had the best result. Okay, and these are only um, in lab or no? Yeah, mostly, mostly in the lab. Mostly the lab. The but there are companies, startups who sell stores. At stores, they deployed some of the instruments under the sea, and they found that their simulation result matches with the okay. uh, real yeah. world result. Okay, great. So there are a lot of challenges and most of the routing protocols they want to uh, either make their protocol energy efficient or they want to handle some problems like node mobility or mm -hmm. this sort of thing. So now I am going to show some of the protocols how they work and first is vector based forwarding. So in this protocol the source, the source sensor wants to send some data to the sink and it has to go through some intermediate sensors. So for this, it at first sends, or sends the data into some intermediate or some other sensor and that sensor, uh, after getting the data, it calculates the distance from the, uh, say, this is the main line, or uh, straight line from the source to a destination and this one is sending data to F and after F, it is getting to A. So A will calculate if it is too far from the main line. If it is too far from the main line, then it will not forward the packet. So you have four sensors here, right? No, there, there, are, there are multiple sensors. So this source one is trying to send to sync one. Okay. So it broadcasts the data to different uh, sensors. And so F and A, they are also sensors. Yeah, yeah, F and A are sensors, and some other sensors are there. Okay. So if everyone tries to broadcast, then it will consume power, so it will not be energy efficient. So what the some nodes will do, if they see that they are in, not in the main line or straight very far line. from the straight line, main line, then it will not just forward. Oh. They will just drop the packet. 
So in this way, <coughs> they will select which packets to forward and which not to forward, and it can save some energy. Okay. So, so all sensors are know the location of all other other no. sensors. Okay. So in the packet, in, in the packet, it uh, it gives its own location, the sender's location, and the destination location, destination location, and the forward's location. That is, he will know the who forwarded it to him. Mm -hmm. So it will know its location. From Basically, the before uh, the question of the part of it was before before sending the actual da data, like uh, every sensor broadcast uh, like a test test packet mm -hmm. to, to identify the data. paths. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So in that way, first it identifies the path and then sends the uh, data packet. Is so it like the routing table, like? Yeah, it's like so a it's like a routing table protocol. maintaining a routing table. They have a soft address in routing. Actually, the routing protocol. So all the properties of routing protocol should be there. Yeah. Oh, I but see. the routing, okay, right. but like the routing can be generated like uh, from the broadcasting. Right. It's not stable like the normal routers. Okay. Uh -huh. So it it has to be updated because in case of sensors, you have to put that into sleep mode to, uh, you know, to preserve the energy of the sensor. So sensor have to be has to be like some sensor might be in the uh, in the sleep mode so that in that case you have to wake that wake up that sensor mm -hmm. and the wake up has a certain cost so in that case you have to identify if you have a different kind of route so the routing table that you are generating in the sensor network it's not similar to the traditional routing uh -huh. table. Okay. So they they like um, activate the sensors or the uh, routers in the midway. Yeah, Whenever no, they need not it. always. Not always. They are actually uh, waking up the sensors. Like in some some sensor routing protocols. Like if you think about, uh, there is a sort of routing protocol named Leech. In that case, uh, no packet is sent to uh, like uh, the source. The source uh, packet is sending the uh, packet to the sink. Okay, the source node is trying to s uh, send the node to the sink, but in s in certain protocols, uh, there is a concept like uh, you use a relay node. Okay, in that case, so in that case, you send the packet. Every source sends the packet to the relay nodes first, then the relay node sends the packet to the sink first. Okay. So in that relay. case, the relay node is important to preserve the energy of the relay node. In that case, so. You have certain trade-offs, like the energy of the battery will drain out of the relay node very soon. So in that case, you have to change the relay node time to time. Okay. So what is the goal of the A node here? Yeah. A is some just a random sensor. Yeah. yeah. So A will decide if the packet has to forward it or has to drop it. Forward so where? Forward it to the sink. Because A might send it to some other node also. Okay. okay yes. So in between, there can be some other node. So the sync uh, position should be fixed. Uh, yeah, sync position can be fixed uh, by. But as if it's not fixed, floating. if it's not fixed, or like if they're moving, then how it works? Okay, uh, it is above the water, also on the water surface. So you can fix it by say manipulating it. So are all these on floating on the water surface? No, sink is floating water because it's uh, oh, I see. because it's it has to transfer it to the base station. So Malaysian Airlines vertical distribution. Yeah. So source is at the bottom seabed. Yeah. yeah. Source can be at the seabed or okay. source can be in some. Okay. Yeah. Some okay. But but uh, apart from it's not all other stuffs are uh, yeah. below the surface. Yes. Oh. And there can be multiple sinks, but yeah. uh, if you know the location of one sink, yeah. then that is sufficient to okay. send okay. data to the base station. So the vector based. So in this protocol, the there is a straight line between the source and the destination, yeah. and the other nodes they find their location respective to the straight line. If it is far from the straight line, then it will not send data. It will drop it. And the if it is in between the uh, near the straight line, then it will send data. How do you make like sure that all the data will be sent? Like, if A drops it and all other nodes are not also close yes. to the main line? So that is the problem is, say, I have one sensor here, one sensor there, this is a roundabout road. Then there is problem, it will not be sent to the destination. That's why, then it'll, like, that's why we have got the improvement here, HSVPF. So you, there cannot, there may be, no straight line between the source and the destination, then 
once it sends data to the next hop, then a new straight line will be drawn from next hop to the destination and it will use then vector based forwarding again from there. So at each hop, the straight line will be recalculated. So in this way, it can transfer data if every node is not in between the straight line. So uh, this is the radius of the pipe or if, if we consider it as a pipe through which the data is sent. In this case, the pipe is fixed, but for the HSBPF, the pipe is changing. Because first say it was this pipe, after sending to here, the pipe is changed. So, okay. so the throughput for this uh, protocol, the throughput is lower than this protocol because it is sending almost all the data to the destination it is not missing anything and another uh, protocol is depth based routing so in this protocol uh, source here is s it is sending our broadcasting data to other nodes and n1 n2 and n3 these are the neighboring nodes and n3 will not transmit or for the data as it is already un, uh, below the uh, source nodes. So every node will have some sensor that can detect its own depth. If mm -hmm. its depth is lower than the, uh, say, the sender's depth, then it will not forward. So N nodes, N3 is below, so its depth is high, so it will not forward the data coming from the S node. And from N1 and N2, both, are, uh, both can uh, forward data that is received from S node. In that case, N1 and N2 uh, both can transmit, but they will maintain some time frame during which it will submit. So N1 will have a less holding time. So one node has, if that has the less holding time, then it will transmit sooner. And the node that is in more depth or in deep that will have more holding time and it will forward later. So the node that is receiving data from both of these nodes, it can get uh, or it can know when it is receiving data. So any data that is got again or that is a repeat data, then it will discard the repeated data, the first data will be counted. Is there any acknowledgement or MAC packet? In that case, N2 may not be, you know, uh, resending the data, right? Because N1 and N2 both are sending the data. Yeah. So if N, uh, if the sync received the data from N1, it can send, you know, signal to N2. Yeah. So N1 has a low holding time and N2 has a holding time high. So once N1 broadcasts the data, N2 then will know that it is already broadcasted. So it can drop it. This is one way, another way, say they don't know each other, they are not getting data from each other, then both of them are say, sending to some other node, that will get the uh, data from, first from the N1 and later from the N2. Mm -hmm. So it will know it has got repeated data or same data twice. Or it can be used for error correction. Yeah, it can. Okay. Yeah. These yeah. nodes are mobile or fixed? Mobile. Mobile, okay. That's and one is like all three axes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But otherwise, they would have known the reliability yeah, position of the other yes. nodes if you had if you if you had a fixed. Yeah. If it is the fixed network, then it's much easier. Yeah, much easy, easier. So, does it work in this way? Like whenever it receives the signal, the sync knows where that N one or N two. Otherwise, if it doesn't receive any signal from N two N two N one N two. It doesn't know whereabouts about that uh, little sensor. Sync, I didn't get that question. The thing is that, like, since uh, the sync needs to know where the N1 and N2 is, right, to send the uh, acknowledgement. Right? Yeah. So, thing is that if it doesn't get any signal from N2, it may not know where to send the NAC or AC, right? Yeah. So, so those acknowledgements are probably handled in the MAC layer or in the TCP layer uh -huh. and 
for yeah network layer it can also send some acknowledgement that it has got i don't know about the acknowledgement in this layer I'm not okay. sure about okay so mac layer also works with the acknowledgement it is uh, NAC or NAC, that is yeah. and TCP transmission layer, right? control protocol also uh, receives some acknowledgement after sending. Okay. So I have shown uh, three protocols how they work. And so oh, why all like receiving sensors are, 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 are like uh, above the sea level? So we can no, they are not above the sea level. No, no. Like our destination is always above the sea level. Uh, yes. So, but you can uh, uh, not you can put sensor uh, at the uh, like uh, bottom of the sea and use optical fiber or something to yes. uh, take all this data directly uh, to the base station. So, if you use the uh, sink at the bottom, yeah, then it will be the reverse instead of going yeah, because up. Yeah, yeah if it's uh, the sea is so deep, it's very difficult to get all the data mm -hmm. like uh, with sonar. Uh, uh, yeah. So. Uh, if you have some optical fiber done at, down the bottom, at the bottom of the sea, yeah, yeah seabed, then you can. So, like you will need a sort of uh, acoustic to optical interfacing. Hmm. Acoustic optical interfacing, how possible? I have no idea. Because optical fiber is no, so fast in yeah. data communication and no, it's true because when you're receiving echoes, I mean, fundamentally, it is possible, but I don't know if they are. No, yeah, it's microphone. Are you receiving all the acoustic signal? Yes, yes. Actually, microphone. Yes, even you're listening music. Yeah, so the technology is more than that. Same, yeah, that's listening music. That's uh, that's also that, huh? Yeah, that's Yeah, but I think it's like optical fiber is very high bandwidth. So uh, I have shown some of the protocols, and there are what's other the protocols. Let uh, your conclusion. <laughs> saying something wrong or <laughs> something wrong. Board. How to <laughs> the how projector? Uh -huh. Because it. Does not yeah, it's from the previous the, slide. Yeah, yeah, it does not the previous the slide. Oh, oh. Yes. That is hidden basis. Yeah. <laughs> so so there is improvement, the room for improvement by making the protocols energy efficient and reliable because reliability is a big problem and energy is the most. So there is only two, you say, uh, talk about only two protocols. There are uh, three, three more. No, three. He talked about three. Yes, three. 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 Talk about three. three. There are four of uh, And I'm giving more. concentration. Yes. The first load will consume the highest power, right? Because we will try to send the wave okay. in many directions. But the node will just only... Because it's just... So the to source like node uh, might have only just send the data. It doesn't have to, say, uh, contain the routing table or it doesn't do some other... But if, if he wants to send the data to all the nodes yeah. on the top layer, then he will have to generate wave to send to it in all directions. Yes. Yeah, for that round, yes. For that session, yes. So but, so, but you generate only one wave. It goes everywhere, right? Uh, Actually, for the detecting neighbor, each node has to it broadcast the messages. Yeah. Oh. Otherwise, if you generate only one wave, wave right? near the node. Oh. No, but it's like, uh, it's going to be omnidirectional. Right. It's uh, going to be omnidirectional, yeah. and you have to generate, if you want to So the energy to distribution, you think about like energy if distribution. If you think of area, like, yeah. it's a huge area it is sending the signal to, the yeah. source. Yes, if it's like point to point, yeah. it has to generate one signal. Yeah. If it if it needs to broadcast, it, yeah. gen, it needs to one generate way, one signal. But it will be, like, the energy will be much, yeah. it will consume much more energy, because it's trying to send the wave in d different direction. If it is the same wave, it is trying to propagate the wave across a huge area? Uh, it's not a problem because the broadcasted, broadcasted packet does not have to be reached from the source. The packets are forwarded. No, he is talking about the first half. I'm, I'm talking about the first, first half. First. From the node, I, it makes sense because it, is, it, it, knows the, it, knows, it knows the direction to the source. So the way we will generate, it needs, doesn't need to cover the huge area. But from no, the source, no, no, the source doesn't know the sink, the in which direction the sink is. It at first it ha it it has to, you know, discover know. the 
Self first, there is two phase. One is the sync can generate some inquiry. It can broadcast messages to the so all the sources, all the sources. who has data. Mm -hmm. Then it will at first for uh, broadcast a message. The other nodes it will just broadcast the message to the bottom. Mm -hmm. And any node that has data, then it will reply the data. And another is say one sensor has data, so it wants to know where to send the data. So it will again broadcast the, uh, say, some data ready signal. So that signal will be propagated to the source. And from that source, it will uh, create a path, and data will propagate through that oh, path. I have a question about path. The path to so the you can use optical fiber, right? No, he's saying that uh, the optical fiber is light in the seabed. And so how how you send light through optical fiber in the seabed? Like Actually, no. uh, at the first one, here at the surface, uh, it is using radio wave. Yeah. But say this one is sending to the onshore sink. And from that onshore sink, it is using fiber optic cable. Okay. So fiber optic cable can be in the seabed also. Yeah. And So uh, which will be cost effective, using fiber optics or? Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works. Accuracy wise, definitely. Reliability wise, fiber optics will be much better. But on but the on the onshore, right? Cost uh, like Above onshore. the sea, you can you also use the accuracy. This the no. I think the messiest no. area of optical radio. fiber. Optical okay. fiber and radio wave. Because from the onshore thing, it is using. Say, yeah, you can anything. use optical fiber. Yeah. Yes. But uh, but. Uh, can you use uh, under the sea optical fiber? Yes, why not? But in, how how can you fix your source in the deep deep? Now he already you fix on the sea bed. Sources, we just fix on the sea bed. If it fix on the sea bed, in that case, it's fixed. And yeah. you can put the optical fiber. But in that case, I'm thinking it may be cost effective. But if you need to uh, detect some uh, data at the mid level. In that case, fiber fiber optic is not feasible. I think yeah. acoustic and fiber optic can be combined. Like if in one layer, like where yeah, they can be kind of communicated by the acoustic. Need like some converter data converter. Yeah, but they they you, could you be can do, do combined that. in the same Com layer.